So the world has changed fundamentally since when we were in school. And many of those changes, as we know, unless we live under a rock, have to do with technology. Students and adults today can connect and engage and collaborate like never before. And when I think about all of these changes, I think about how our students today are fundamentally different. They are wired differently. They are digital learners in every sense. And I look to my own son as evidence. My son Nicholas is nine, and he goes to PS3 in Staten Island, New York. And his favorite game is Minecraft. He is so addicted to Minecraft that, unbeknownst to me, he created his own YouTube channel and had over 40 tutorial videos. And when I watch him on the Xbox Connect, and I go down and I observe, I see him collaborating, communicating, solving problems, thinking critically, and creating his own new world with his friends. He loves this world. It is relevant, meaningful, and engaging. The problem for my son and countless other students across the world is school is the exact opposite of the real world. School does everything to suck out the passion, the creativity. How do I know this? Because both, both my children hate school. And it pains me as an educator. They hate school. But who can blame our kids? Who can blame our kids when they're in that real world and they come to school? and we put them in desks in rows. We use bells to herd them on from one class to the next. And we block the very same tools that they are using in ways that does support learning. And we look at our structure. It's all about content. And we move our kids from algebra to biology to chemistry to phys ed when the whole world, life, is taking all that content and throwing it up against the wall. Are we preparing our kids for life? Is school preparing our kids for life? When we look at how our system has reduced our students that have the capability to be divergent thinkers, to be creative, innovative, curious, that want to play, we force them to take one test that determines whether or not they are learning or that we are successful. But when the reality is, we now can create one assignment that affords a student a million different ways to showcase what they've learned. And another big disconnect for our students is the very tools that they're using outside of school are blocked, banned, and prohibited. When they bring the tools of their age to school, we punish them, or we don't even allow them. And the problem is the adults. Traditionally, school has worked well for us. Schools are structured based on conformity, rules, because it's easy for us. And the adults that are tasked with preparing students for the real world, are the least knowledgeable of the real world. And we've worked extremely hard to maintain the status quo. This was me. This was my school. And the result was a sterilized environment where kids were not able to be creative. They weren't innovative. They were not able to follow their passions. How do we move past this? And it starts with us. If education is good for one thing, and one thing only, it's good for making excuses not to move forward, making excuses not to change. We've heard them all. I can't do this because of this. Time. Because we don't have the resources. It's another thing to do. But the bottom line is, if it's important to us, we'll find a way. If not, we'll make an excuse. It needs to be important to us to create schools that work better for our kids if we truly want to prepare them to be successful in the real world. I've learned two things as an educator and a leader that I and my school needed to do to move forward. First was give up control. This is the hardest thing that we have to do as an educator. 
it is so hard to give up control because we're afraid of what might happen. And the second thing is trust. We need to trust our students. Schools breed mistrust for our kids. But when you give up control and you trust kids, it really becomes about student learning because it's about them. It is not about us. And we need to stop making it about us if we want our kids to be excited to want to learn. They hate learning. They hate it. And who could blame them? Here's five things that we can do to create schools that work for kids. Number one, social media is the world. Look at how we use it. Look at how the world uses it. Yet we do not allow our students to use a tool that is embedded in every facet of society. Pedagogy first, technology second, if appropriate. This is an extremely appropriate tool because it fosters creativity, collaboration. Students can create artifacts of learning to demonstrate conceptual mastery in so many different ways. And it's a tool that no matter what they probably do once they leave school, they will probably be able to use this. And we fault kids for being inappropriate online, yet we as educators are not teaching them how they can use this tool to demonstrate learning, how they can use it to engage in conversations, find answers to their questions, drive change, and make a difference. Change number two. Students have all of these devices. They have access at home. But we do everything in our power in schools to not allow kids to bring their tools to school. Bring your own device allows students to use real-world tools to do real-world work. BYOD enhances learning, increases student productivity, and allows them to conduct better research. And it also provides us an opportunity on how to teach students to be digitally responsible by using tools appropriately. And when you look at students, it shouldn't, we shouldn't differentiate between a pencil and paper, archaic forms of technology, and an iPad, a smartphone. It's a tool. Don't we want to allow our students to use tools if it can help them do what they do better? Three, we have done a great job in our country eradicating wood shop, metal shop. We don't have spots, places in schools, where kids can go because they want to, to invent, tinker, make, and create to learn. Maker spaces are an incredible way to bring play back into the picture, to let kids follow their passions, experience trial and error, all different ability levels because they want to be there. When we created this, it turned a library that students did not go to into one of the most trafficked areas in our building. And students are now finding value in what they're, do, do, in what they're learning. And this has been a catalyst that has tr transformed the culture at our school because there was no pressure. Kids weren't getting a grade. They weren't being tested. They were able to go in there with their friends without supervision and do what they love, follow their passions. When we look at environments, how our schools are structured, we can learn many lessons from other successful organizations. You look at a Starbucks, for example. What do we love about Starbucks? Obviously coffee. We go there for conversation. We can access Wi-Fi. The seating is much more conducive to conversations. Then when we look at Google, Google creates areas where kids can go and play. They support it. They promote it. So let me ask you this. If it works at Starbucks and it works at Google, why should it not be able to work at a school? We've learned it can. We can turn school environments into places that reflect the real world, that treat students with respect, that are inviting, that are comfortable. And that's what we did. Providing Keurigs for kids where they can get coffee anytime they want. Charging stations in common areas. 
ubiquitous access to Wi-Fi. That's the real world. And the ability to play games in common areas. And you want to know something? Our students were able to go on leather couches in a room that we cleaned out, and they could take naps on their free time whenever it worked. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the real world. But again, if we're not creating real world spaces and environments for our students to learn, to collaborate, to interact in, we are setting them up for failure when they leave. And when we think about, you know, my last big change is how kids learn. Blended and virtual learning opportunities give us the opportunity to not only personalize school for our students, but personalize learning for them as well. And when we look at the resources that are available, again, solutions instead of excuses. We take the old independent study concept. And what we did was we saw an opportunity in open courseware. Free courses from Harvard, Yale, MIT that are out there. We created an independent open courseware study, leveraging and harnessing a free resource. We gave our students choice as to the courses that they wanted to take. And after they demonstrated what they could do with the new knowledge that was constructed, these new skills, we gave them honors credit at high school. I gave them the honors credit. Why? It's more important about the learning. Learning spaces should no longer be confined to brick and mortar schools. We now have the means to create any type of learning experience we want for our kids. There are so many possibilities. And I say possibilities because everything that I'm talking about was done in a school with limited resources, an aging infrastructure, and a diverse population. And we saw the inherent opportunities and realized that our school was not working for our kids. And our call to action was, we have this information. We have the tools. It's outside of school. How do we create an experience that is less about us and more about our kids? And the biggest thing we needed to do that we did not do was listen to our students. Student voice is so important because school is about our kids. It should not be about us. But when we look at how schools are structured, how they function, it's always about the adults. We listen to what the kids want, and we act on their ideas, and it builds greater support and appreciation for what we are doing for them. And we can create a free-range learning environment that is reflective of the real world, that students are excited to be a part of, that they want to be a part of, where they're going to apply what they've learned. They're going to collaborate. They're going to, you don't need rules anymore when students are engaged and they see the meaning of what they're learning. That disconnect has to end. No longer can we have school and life as separate entities. We need to bring those entities together to give our students the relevance that they need and deserve and expect. Because the world is not going to stop changing because some of us want it to or because some adults have their heads in the sand. And the longer that we wait to not change professional practice to create a school that works for kids, we run the risk of becoming more and more irrelevant to our number one boss. We work for kids. They are our boss. They are our number one stakeholder. And we look at the endless possibilities that are at our fingertips. And then we look at all the excuses that come from everywhere. Well, you want to know something? I've heard all those excuses. I heard them every time we were told, we can't do this. You shouldn't do this. It's not going to benefit your kids. It's smoke and mirrors, bells and whistles. No, it's not. Because not only did every metric increase that we had judged on, we sat down and had conversations with our students and are able to look them in the eye and they were able to tell us, you are doing a better job for us. And we've seen it. 
We've heard it. They are creating and showcasing their learning like never before. Thank you, everybody.